I'm not sure who said shh, but everybody got quiet. <laughs> I want to bring you to Auburn University. I'm not sure I need someone that can bring order now, that easily. So, First, let me thank you so much for your willingness to take out your time from a very busy schedule on a beautiful summer day to come and celebrate the lives of Tom and Gail Smith. They've done so much for us, so much for the university, and so much for many young people that I think it's certainly appropriate that we have this opportunity. Let me just comment a little bit about the contributions Dr. Smith has made. And it's so often when you try to do that, you come up short. So obviously, these comments will come up short as well. My wife, Nell, and I talked about this coming over. And certainly, we can think of no one that is deserving to have a retirement such as this, a ceremony, a celebration, if you will. I say celebration because it is really with mixed feelings uh, that I come forward, mixed feelings in the sense that certainly Dr. Smith has earned this retirement. He's added so much to so many people and to the university itself. But it's also a little sad when you have someone that is leaving because he has added so much to the university, you wonder just how you're going to fill those shoes. I would say, though, that I believe the Coral Department is as strong as it's ever been, and so he's certainly leaving it better than when he came, and certainly leaving it in a great situation for his successor, and I think that's certainly commendable as well. He's had a 34-year period in choral music. And I said this once before, but I don't know if you were there or not. But there are many standards that one would use around the university that would establish excellence. And you could think of athletics, and you could think of academics, and so forth. But the one person that I think of for Auburn University that epitomizes outstanding accomplishment, a gentleman, highly trained professional and someone who's brought great acclamation to Auburn over the years is Tom Smith. Not often that choral music would take a lead over athletics, but I think this time you've earned it, and I congratulate <laughs> you for that. Just a few numbers that I've been offered. Um, he's conducted more than 400 major concerts in Auburn and throughout the world, and over 700 performances of churches, communities, and civic and professional organizations. I'm sure you remember each one of those, Tom, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure Gail remembers what you were wearing, if she's like my wife, and, uh, and probably didn't match either. So, uh. But he's also taught more than 2,700 college students, 2,700. And one of the things that we'll do this fall and take a look at at Auburn is what do you really take away from the university, and how does it prepare you for the future? And there are many pieces to that puzzle, as we all know. But I would say to you what he has put in to those 2,700 students certainly positions them for the future as much as any other subject that I could identify for you. They've taken great pride in their culture, their history, the personal accomplishments that they have made as they have gone forward, and that pride that you develop when you're part of a truly outstanding organization. I wish there was some way to measure the value that Dr. Smith has added to 2,700 students, and certainly more that were not his students, but attended. During his time, his wife, Gail, who is an excellent musician in her own right, has been a constant and selfless source of strength and support. She has a bachelor's from Sanford and a master's in vocal performance from Auburn. 
She's taught at elementary, junior high, and senior high music, as well as private voice, and I would add, she also had to put up with me as superintendent. So with that, uh, she certainly accomplished herself. The two of them are certainly a partner there. Make it so positive when you see both of them around because they represent the very best of humanity. And I think they've been role models both personally and professionally. Now, first of all, I would say just on a couple of announcements, the next Board of Trustee meeting is not until June 29th and 30th, but I do intend to recommend that the core room at Goodwin Hall be named after Dr. Smith. And I think And Tom, as you know, nothing comes free by naming that room where and expect some performances periodically along the way. <laughs> so there are some hooks attached to that, but you certainly deserve it, and it will be great pride that we make that recommendation. We've also wished to announce, uh, and I'm off given the opportunity to make this announcement, a lot of people have worked very hard on this, and that is to establish a choral music alumni of Dr. Smith. Thomas R. and Gail B. Smith Endowment for a student in choral music. We had hoped to have uh, available to you, but you'll be able to pick up a form as you exit today, and I encourage you to do that as I've already gotten mine. We announce that already $3,750 have been raised toward this scholarship, and we certainly will look forward to it going even higher. Now, forms I think will be available <laughs> from an usher. Just let me say in conclusion this. Uh, I'm here because I believe Dr. Smith represents the very best of Auburn University and it's with great pride that we come to celebrate his retirement and we wish him so much comfort and good times as he goes forward in his life. To Tom and Gail, thank you very much. The state of Alabama certainly wanted to make sure that they were a part of this great occasion. Tom, if you'll come forward. Tom, there are not many men in life that are Renaissance men. <laughs> You're one. You're, Tom, Tom is a man for all seasons. And he has um, been such a, a, a blessed enrichment to this entire community, to this state, and very frankly, to this nation and abroad. The Alabama legislature wanted to pass this, this, this resolution in your honor, committing Auburn University Choir Director, Dr. Thomas R. Smith, upon his outstanding professional achievements. Whereas it is our distinct pleasure to commend Auburn University Choir Director, Dr. Thomas R. Smith, upon his outstanding professional achievements, and upon his retirement after 34 years of dedicated service. And whereas Dr. Smith received his Bachelor of Music degree from Sanford University, a Master of Arts degree in Music Theory from the University of Iowa, and a Doctorate of Musical Arts in Choral Conducting and Literature from the University of Colorado. And whereas as Professor of Music and Director of Choral Activities at Auburn University, Dr. Smith has directed and mentored over 2,000 choral students. His celebrating performing ensembles, the concert choir, and Auburn University singers have performed across the United States and abroad. Recent performances include the 2005 American Choral Directors Association National Convention in Los Angeles and the Auburn University Singers and Concert Choirs Tour of, of Europe, as well as their annual spring and summer tours across the United States. And whereas Dr. Smith serves as Minister of Music at Providence Baptist Church here in Lee County, and is the conductor of the Alabama Singing Men. He looks forward to sharing his retirement with his lovely wife, Yale, 
who is also retiring as choral director and choral conductor at Auburn Junior High School. They anticipate spending more time with their daughter, Marisha, their son-in-law, Robbie, son, Aaron, and granddaughter, Ella. And whereas the Auburn University Choral Alumni will host a retirement concert to be presented at Lakeview Baptist Church in Auburn on May 27th and 28th, 2006, Dr. Smith has indeed earned the admiration and respect of all those who are associated with him, and he is most deserving of this retirement celebration. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the legislature of Alabama that Dr. Thomas R. Smith is recognized and honored upon his outstanding professional achievements and upon his retirement. A copy of this resolution shall be provided for appropriate presentation with our sincere tribute and praise. Certified by McDowell Lee, Secretary of the Senate, April 17, 2006. Tom, this, this, this resolution is important for many reasons to us. But for one thing, a copy of it will go to the archives of the state of Alabama. Those who do research 10 years from now or 100 years from now will know of your greatness, and we appreciate you. to begin our time together by asking Mr. Russell Smith to please stand. Can we have the lights up so the crowd can see Mr. Smith? <laughs> Russell Smith, of course, is the father of T.R. Tom Smith. Russell, you raised him right. <laughs> and all of us appreciate that. We're proud and honored to call him friend, teacher, mentor. We can't imagine how proud you are to call him son. Some are called to teach. Some are called to minister. Some are called to preach. Some are called to sing. We gather here today at this hour in this place to honor and thank one who was called to sing. We thank you for answering that calling to sing and for sharing your music with us. You have enriched our lives, T.R., Tom, Dr. Smith, by whatever name we call you and know you. You have enriched our lives. You have helped us to have a more fulfilled life. You have helped us to see and do things that we alone might not have seen and might not have done. You have brought grace and beauty into our lives, especially in the lives of the people behind me that might not have been there had you not been raised right and had you not passed our way. He has helped us to be more than you thought, than we thought we might can be. You have helped us see things that we alone cannot see. I am reminded of the old Lawrence Welk television show. Many of you in this room are old enough to remember the Lawrence Welk show. So one hand go up down here. <laughs> there was a singer on that show called, uh, named Aladdin. And he often did a piece about an old violin, bat up, beat up, battered, scarred, about how an auctioneer tried to auction off that violin. Well, here it is. What am I bid? What am I bid? $25, 50, nothing. 10, five, a dollar. And then an old man came up, took the violin, and made beautiful music. Handed it back to the auctioneer and sat down. All of a sudden, a hundred dollars, 500, a thousand, 1,500, 2,000. The same instrument, but it had been changed forever by the touch of the master's hand. The touch of the master's hand. Those who know you and love you, those whom you know and whom you love, and particularly the people gathered behind me and 
hundreds more who cannot be here today. We too have seen and felt and experienced the touch of the Master's hand. Wanting to be good, wanting to be perfect is not enough. Work, hard work, preparation, perseverance, all go into achieving excellence, to achieving perfection. I've heard many of these young people behind me talk about how you, in rehearsal or performance, could, with one look, <laughs> en encourage, shame, <laughs> make them feel like they didn't know they could feel. And they wanted to be the best for you because you believed in them, helped them to believe in themselves. One of the most beautiful things I've ever heard was some of the young people, now old people behind me, <laughs> talk about how when you almost achieved that perfection, when you almost achieved that greatness, how tears would come to your eyes and run down your cheeks as they would come to their eyes and run down their cheeks. Because you were a part, and they were a part, of something special, something good. They were something they could not dream of being. But you had led them there. You had carried them there. And because they could do it in choral music, because they could do it in rehearsal, because they could do it in performance, they could also do it in other areas of their life. More than once over these last several days, I've heard people say, you know, I never did really know what the in one influence Dr. Smith and Gail had on me. In every area of my life, when I've faced a decision, I have thought, what would T.R. do? What would Gail do? There's another, another story that comes to mind when I think of you two. You've probably heard it before of a great, wide, and calm, a very placid lake. You throw one stone into that lake, and the ripples go forth. They go on and on and on, far greater than we could ever see. Where they end, we never know. I think the same is true for you. I believe if I ask for a show of hands of every person who is teaching music who is involved in music, who is seeking to pass on to others, i.e. the next generation, what you passed on to them, I think virtually every person in this hall would hold up their hand, especially those standing behind me. Yes, thank you for answering your call to sing, and thank you for sharing your talent with us, and your love and your care. I was fortunate enough to have breakfast with some of these good people behind me yesterday, and they were talking about some of the things that I have just mentioned. They were talking about the effect and the influence you had had on their lives. And one of them started talking about the Broadway musical, the hit, mega hit musical on Broadway, Wicked. Now we know there's nothing wicked about you, Tom. <laughs> well, your dad can probably tell us some pretty wicked stories. <laughs> There's a song in there, For Good, For Good. And I think it does indeed sum up you, your life, and your contributions to this great university, as Dr. Richardson said. But this great university at its finest and best is in the hearts, the minds, and the lives of its students, those gathered behind me and more. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason bringing something we must learn, and we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them. And if we, he and we help them in return. Well, I don't know if I believe that's true, but I know I am who I am today because I knew you. Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes a sun, like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood, who can say if I've been changed for the better? But because I knew you, I have been changed for the good. It well may be that we may never meet again in this lifetime. So let me say before we part, so much of me is made of what I learned from you. You'll be with me like a handprint on my heart, a handprint on our hearts. 
And now, whatever way our stories end, I know you have rewritten mine by being my friend. Like a ship blown from its moorings by a wind off the sea, like a seed dropped by a skybird in a distant wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better, but because I knew you, because I knew you, I've been changed for good. Yes, thank you for answering that call to sing. Thank you for sharing your music with us. Thank you for changing us for better. Thank you for changing us for good. some regret that I'm having to make this videotape. Auburn University is losing two of its most valuable people. They've made immense contributions not only to Auburn and the students that have come through it, but also to the state as a whole. Obviously Gail was with the Auburn City Schools when I was there as, as superintendent and she just did a magnificent job and I'm sure the skills that they acquired going through the choral program uh, will cause them not only to appreciate music, but also to be a participant in themselves. Tom, of course, is my benchmark for success at Auburn University. He's had 34 years of truly outstanding performances. I've watched many. I've never seen one that I did not consider to be excellent. He's just represented Auburn in such a positive way. They've been all over the world, and I'm sure that the Auburn logo is known thanks to Tom. Do you love me? Do I what? Do you love me? Do I love you? For all these years now, I've washed your dockers, cooked your meals, and taught school. How I did all this? I don't know how, after all these years, why well, talk about love right now? Gail, I have another question. Should we retire now? Should we what? Should we retire now? Should we retire now? For 34 years you've had your singers, and I've had my junior high shows. Seen our own kids dress up in sequins. So yes, Tom, I guess we'll go. Remember when we came to Auburn many years ago, we came to see. Just like you said. I had more hair. And it was red. And after all the students that we've taught to dance and sing, there's still just one more question. Do they love us? Do they what? Do they love us? with us. 
Music we share, what's more than this? If that's not love, what is? Then they love us. I suppose they do. And I suppose we love them too. I'm Dr. Tom Smith, director of the Auburn University Singers, and we're here to have fun for the next 30 minutes. Won't you join us? Probably my favorite memory from being in choir is when Jester Hairston came. We sang a lot of great spirituals, and um, I think the, the most unique part was that Dr. Hairston stopped and turned around and said, This boy's good. This boy's good. Y'all know this boy is good. And this boy was Dr. Smith. Of course, his hair was red at the time, and he wasn't much more than a boy. And Dr. Smith, I consider you a, a mentor and somebody that I pattern my life after in various ways, and, um, and you are a great, great example of the biblical concept of servant leadership, and I just want to say thank you. When Dr. Smith became department head of our music department, it was like the sun came out. Uh, things were more optimistic and positive, and after a few months, I could see a change in people's spirits, looking forward to positive changes in our department. Meanwhile, Al is outside. He's got a special guest who's been bringing music to our ears for many years. Right, Al? That's right, Katie. Five times now, uh, the Auburn University Singers, a 36-member choir, has been here, led by Dr. Tom Smith. But you are retiring after 34 years of director of choral activity. That's right. In fact, this is probably my last performance, actually, with the group. Really? Because we'll be heading back home tomorrow. Well, what are you going to be doing? Well, just, uh, I'll still I'll be active, still be doing some clinics and uh -huh. workshops and still do some church music as well. What are you going to miss most, Dr. Smith? Uh, the students, yeah. definitely the students and the opportunity to work with them every day. This is the finest group of students anywhere. Well, why don't you, one last time, Dr. Smith leading the Auburn University Choir. Thank you. all the best. I just wish you all health and joy and every blessing God will pour on you the rest of your life in retirement. Love you. Just like to say uh, what a great experience this has been. I've heard about this my entire life. Uh, my mom's just raved about you know singers in Russia. I've just heard so much about Auburn and, and you and I came here and it, it's every bit as, as what I heard. You've just been such an example to me of what excellence is and everything you strive to do excellence and in turn that has made me want to do the best that I could. I'm so excited that you get to move on to a new um, part of your life and I'm so proud to have been part of your life and so honored to have you as a part of mine. You know I didn't know who was auditioning me but they were like well that was, that was still a great job and then I come to find out later that it was you and it just really meant like I mean, a lot to know that you're going to spot me not being a very experienced. You still, you know, just really, still a lot for me. You know what I mean? Uh, I guess we got a song for you. Oh, okay. Well, here you go. We have a song for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Bang, bang, bang. Do, 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 do
T.R. T.R. Oh, she's gonna retire. Oh, T.R. But we're really gonna miss ya. We're gonna miss ya. Tiara. Tiara. Yeah. <laughs> But I just want to say, again, congratulations and thank you so much for a great three years. I've made some of my best friends in concert choir, met the love of my life in concert choir, and it's just become a really important part of my life. So thank you very much for giving me that opportunity. Love you. I just want to let you know what a wonderful experience it was to be under your direction. And I just, it's been my best experience at Auburn, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. Thank you for making me a better musician and vocalist. We love you. I can't think of a couple that have meant more to our family than, uh, than both of you. And what a joy it's been to serve with you these last 22 years and to know the heritage and the history that you've been involved in here, not only at Providence, but at the university and around the world. You need to know what a privilege it is for me to be able to say thank you to you for countless things. Um, I've been one of those people who's been a recipient of the gifts that you've been given and the gifts that you've shared. When Dr. Smith came to Auburn 34 years ago, our church was without a minister of music. He stopped, stepped right in and took charge of one of our choirs and helped us through that interim until we found one. From that time until now, I have greatly admired Dr. Smith's work for its excellence and for the contribution it's made to students and to the entire community. The professional excellence of Dr. Smith needs no elaboration. It speaks for itself. This is not the end, but will be the beginning. We will spend eternity together because of our love for the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be uh, singing in the heavenly choir, and we will truly know why we sang, O day full of grace, and what would we have done without your music. May your retirement embrace you as you've embraced our lives. Now let's enjoy our grandkids and get senior adult discounts at Hardy's. I know there may be snow on the mountain, but there's still fire in the furnace. Forever, War Eagle. When I first came to Auburn, I would never understand that my life could be changed with just sequins and jazz hands. A wise old owl showed me the way to a world full of music that formed who I am today. He's a teacher, a preacher, a father, and a friend. A maestro who leads with a hand he will always lend. From choo-choo to cheesy to a little respect, he kept us dancing without breaking our necks. We could fuss and fight, cry and even cuss, but there was never any doubt that he really loved us. I can remember that year that my grades were not superb. My parents were frustrated and almost kicked me to the curb. I was on the brink of, son, you're done. But it was that credit of summer choir that sure saved my buns. Because there's no way to describe the fun I had thanks to TR, who guided me like a dad. What would I do without my music is impossible to say, because thanks to Dr. Smith, it's in my heart today. Thank you, Dr. Smith, for everything you have taught me. It has been an honor to have you as a director, and more than that, as a friend. Congratulations. Dr. Smith, I've got to be the luckiest person in the world because I've been able to be in Auburn at 
two different periods in my life now and to experience your uh, gentle spirit and your guiding hand and your unconditional acceptance. You taught me how to teach music and to always strive for excellence no matter who was singing. You've been a benchmark for me and how I strive to, li strive to live my life and I am so truly thankful for that. And Gail, you have throughout the years been a wonderful, wonderful friend. You know how to read between the lines of people's hearts and you've done that with me on so many occasions. You are truly a very special person to me and I thank you for how you've touched my life and I wish the best of luck to both of you. Dr. Smith, when I think about you, three things immediately come to mind and that's commitment, consistency, and your relationships that you build with other people. And through the many years that I've had the opportunity to work with you, both at the university and at church, I really do appreciate those three things. I've never shared this with him, but it was Dr. Smith's encouragement that influenced me to pursue a career in choral music education. For 13 wonderful years, I've had both an exciting and challenging career in music education. Part of that challenge is knowing that Dr. Smith is in the audience when my choir performs. As I prepare my choirs, I always wonder what Dr. Smith will think about their performance. I always remember his motto, anything worth doing is worth doing right. Dr. Smith, thank you for leading by example. Thank you for being an excellent teacher and choir director. Thank you for being a wonderful mentor. And most of all, thank you for being a great friend. Thank you so much for encouraging people and encouraging me to use their talents and to develop their talents to use them to the, their fullest ability. Thank you for being a godly example. Thank you and Gail for modeling the Christian marriage. Thank you for modeling being a good father. Thank you for demanding and expecting excellence. Hey, Dr. Smith and Gail, Kim and I wanted to take just a minute to tell you how much you both have meant to us over the years and what you've meant to our family and our children. Um, back in the days when I was in the Singers, I just really appreciated your influence and um, I never told you this, but you were like a second father to me and I, I really look up to you as, as many do. Um, I just appreciate the influence that you had on me in my college days and, and throughout my, my working career as well. Um, and I'm so thankful that the boys have been able to have those same experiences. Um, Dr. Smith and Gail, we're just so grateful to you for all that you've done for us over the years. You just provided a great example for us and you've just made all of our experiences with singers and anything that has to do with Auburn University and the choral department, just a wonderful memory for us. Um, just from the times when I started out in Singers, I, can, I just couldn't even begin to tell you how many memories I have from that wonderful time and how much I enjoy being a part of the Singers. And it's just been so, um, so rewarding for it to come full circle and for Brad and Chris to be involved in the Singers um, over the last years. I think back to when Gail was Brad's first babysitter whenever he was a newborn and I just uh, appreciate her um, just her willingness to be involved with our family and we just uh, we just appreciate everything about you so much. Um, and uh, I really appreciate what you and uh, Ms. Gail have done, Dr. Smith. Um, your family has just, they've been like a second family to us and we really appreciate everything you do and good luck in the future. You've turned all of our family and uh, the other people that you've that you've taught over the years into just better people and you, you teach us so much more than things having to do with music. You teach us how to be better people and, and, and just to live our lives. And so thank you for everything you've done for us, uh, both in singers and concert choir and 
just as as a leader and as someone we could look up to here in college. So thank you for everything. We love you both, um, and good luck. What would I do without my music? I've thought about that term a lot when we were approached this retirement date for Tom Smith, for TR. What would I do without my music? What will Auburn do? What will the music department do? What will choral music do without Tom Smith? What would we do, not without our music, but what would we do? How would our lives be without Tom's leadership Tom's got it, and yes, his music that he gave to us. He's blessed and enriched our lives. We thank God for him, and we praise God for him.
Wow. Um, I must say a word of thanks to all those that have taken a part in the program, for those who organized this. And this has all been, I really had no idea what was going on here. That I, my responsibility is to choose the music and conduct it, which I'm about to do. And, uh, but I appreciate all of those who had a part, Dr. Richardson, Ted Little, David Housel, um, for all of you that took the time to come. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to just kind of let the music speak for itself. If I need to say something, I will. But otherwise, we're going to just enjoy this time of singing. And I'm so indebted to uh, all of these who have taken the time to come back. Even if we didn't do the concert today, just the rehearsal time, that we had yesterday would be enough. We're going to ask you to stand as we begin our program with the Star Spangled Banner and the alma mater.